Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the second week of me interviewing real estate brokerages. Now, last video I had talked about interviewing my first real estate broker and them setting the bar pretty high. So this week I wanted to interview a few more brokers just so I could get a compare and contrast to different brokers and just see where other brokers stand and if the first broker really was that great or was it just all kind of marketing and sales trying to get me to join their team. We wanted to see how different brokers compared to the first one and just see what the market looks like in terms of real estate brokers. My name is Dan and on this channel I'm going to talk about my real estate journey and career from studying for the real estate exam, finding brokers like I am doing right now, and also life as a real estate agent, especially in the first few months and as a new agent. In addition to that, I'm going to be giving you guys some personal finance tips and just other personal finance recommendations on this channel. If you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the content that I'm putting out, then please consider subscribing to my channel. It will really help out the channel and also help uh, motivate me to put more videos out like this and help create more content. Now without further ado, I'm going to be talking about my experience interviewing my second broker and my attempt at interviewing my third broker this week and kind of how that went. Now last video I had talked about interviewing a broker that was kind of far away. It was a 20 minute drive. Even though that it was further away, there were some pros and some reasons why I had chose to interview them even though they were a little further and not really uh, located in my hometown. Now this next broker, I actually looked for offices that were especially in my hometown so I didn't have to commute too far and also because Merrick is a town that I've like, grown up in and I know the ins and outs of so definitely an area where I could uh, be of service and provide value to clients who are also looking to live in this Merrick and general area. So I actually interviewed for Signature Premier Properties, which is one of the fastest growing real estate brokerages on Long Island. And one of my friends from college actually just joined them a couple months ago, which has kind of put them on the radar for me and it gave me an extra reason to try to interview them. Not only that, but they have great reviews on Long Island and many people are actually going to them and using them as their real estate broker. Now this particular office in Merrick has been around for quite some time and also is one of the top producing offices of the company and of the brokerage. Now those are some facts that I learned after growing in so I was actually pleasantly surprised that the office that I picked ended up being uh, you know, one of the better offices. This actually gives more reason to choose them. and will make it even more difficult for me to choose a brokerage because of how great their office is performing and how, how long they have been around. So before I get into this broker interview and what I thought about Signature Premier Properties, I wanted to talk about why it's important to interview multiple brokers. When you're looking for a sponsoring broker and a broker to work under, you're not really getting interviewed by them, you're more interviewing them because at the end of the day, they're working for you. The manager at each office is working for you and you wanna make sure that they are someone that you are gonna be comfortable working with and also gonna help you succeed in your business. So it's important not to get, not to only interview one broker. You need to make sure that even though this broker seems like a great fit so far, you might interview another broker and realize, wow, like this other broker has so much more to offer. I shouldn't have been bamboozled and, and tricked with all the sales going on from this first broker. So definitely make sure to envy multiple brokers. It can actually give you a good idea of what is considered a good broker and not a good broker. So I'm going to talk about my impressions of Signature Premier Properties and definitely off the bat, the management broker was very friendly and she was definitely attentive and wanted to answer all my questions. Signature Premier Properties is definitely a brokerage that will offer the training that new agents need. Unfortunately, during COVID, they don't really offer in-person training anymore, but they do offer a crash course for new agents, which is an online kind of live session where all the new agents go on and you can interact with the trainer and interact with all the other new agents that are being hired and starting at the same time as you. So you can always bounce ideas back and forth with the new agents and the trainer, but to keep in mind that it is online, so you don't get the in-person connection and help that you may get only for uh, those in-person interactions. But even so, they do have a lot of online training. Even after the crash course, there's plenty of online videos and other seminars and coaching where you can join as a new agent and get all the training you need. Aside from that, you can always set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with the managing broker. So that's definitely a question I asked, even though I can't get in-person training on these training classes for new agents, can I sit in 
and speak with you, the managing broker, just to help me with anything I need. So she said, yes, of course, you can always schedule a time with me to kind of go over anything you need. Um, she'll also be there for the first few kind of uh, contract signings and interactions with clients. So definitely there as a crutch and just as a support, uh, especially for my first few months as a new agent. So that's definitely a great positive and something that I do look forward uh, when looking for a new brokerage. Now, one of the cons other than the fact that they don't offer in-person training and training classes was the fact that a lot of the agents at the office, even though it was a top producing office, all of the agents there were working off of referrals. They were definitely more experienced and definitely been working in the business for multiple decades. So they've, they've have a huge referral basis and clients refer other clients to them. So they weren't really generating new leads, they were just kind of working off of leads that they already developed in all the years. So for me, I wanted to be around an office where there were younger agents and agents who were trying to go get those new leads and kind of learn from them and bounce ideas off of them. So for me, that was one of the sticking points and may make me end up not choosing signature premier properties. That was one of the big reasons I wanted to one of the environment where it will foster and kind of um, help kickstart my real estate career and not just you know be told that hey I just kind of work off referral basis that's really all I do right now um, that's kind of how I felt now in terms of commission it was actually really close to Douglas Elliman which I talked about in my last video uh, because of all the training and all the mentorship and help that they provide for new agents they definitely start at of the lower end uh, in terms of commission splits it's going to be between the 50 50 to 60 40 splits so definitely lower if and if you're if you're a more experienced agent you may not be looking at signature premier properties they're great for new agents but not great if you're already experienced and looking for a higher split elsewhere so what i've learned as well is that most offices will charge a six percent flat fee off your commission this is for uh, this is to pay for all the admin help that you'll be getting from the office the administrative staff and also it actually goes toward the managing broker as well so 50 50 plus six percent you know it doesn't seem like you're getting a lot of uh, a huge chunk of the the commission but hopefully all the trading will make up for it now kind of want to move on to the uh the second broker that i wanted to interview and kind of a little story about what happened with them and i actually has called this brokerage on monday of this week so i think this was about march 7th when i called this brokerage I knew that this was a boutique brokerage, meaning that they didn't have many agents. I think they had about 20 agents on board at the time or at this time, uh, March 2021. So knew that they were a smaller brokerage, but wanted to experience an interview with them just to see what it would be like and if they could provide as much training. And I saw that they sold a lot of properties in my neighborhood. So I figured why not interview with them? So I called them on Monday. I talked with the managing broker or at least the broker that works there. He seems to be the owner of the company. He said that I can meet you with you on Wednesday at four o'clock. And I said, great, no problem. Let's meet them. Unfortunately, I didn't really reach out to him beforehand to confirm it, but I felt that, you know, four o'clock on Wednesday, uh, he, he made it seem like he wrote it down or, or whatever it may be. So I went to their office. I didn't see anyone at their office. It was actually all dark in there. So I was kind of kind of curious, like, hey, why, why is there no one here? Uh, it's, it's, 358 so I went online to their website I found the broker's number and I kind of gave him a text saying hey I'm here are we still good to meet at four and he immediately texted me back saying oh I've been trying to reach out to you I've been texting you um, I'm, I'm held up at a meeting right now I can meet up a little later so I was like okay a little later maybe, I'm thinking maybe that's like 10-15 minutes so I text back saying okay I didn't really get a text from you but okay i can wait for you what what time are you available so kind of sent that and luckily my house is only a few minutes away so i can actually walk back home and decide to wait a little bit just kind of wait i was still in my still in my dress shirt and dress pants and just waiting around for this text and waited half an hour 45 minutes hour okay obviously this interview is not happening today so i you know got changed and waited waited all night the next day and this is actually the second day afterwards and still no text from the broker so it's kind of weird how this broker's been ghosting me or ghosted me it seems like you guys are getting a lot of uh, new listings on your website and you don't have that many agents so it seems like you guys need to help and you need more agents and you need to recruit more people to work for you but 
Then when it came to interviewing with you, you ended up ghosting me, which is kind of weird. Uh, that was kind of disappointing. I had actually high hopes for this brokerage. Um, and I'm not gonna say what their name of the brokerage was, but if you watched in my last video, I do mention what broker I was going to interview for, so you can probably deduce that and figure that out from my last video. Um, but other than that, guys, that's it. Those are my two brokerage uh, interview experiences this week. I'm contemplating interviewing a one or two more, but I'm not really sure if I need to do that. Another two brokerages that I already interviewed for, they already seem pretty great, and I'm, I think I'm gonna have to choose between one of those, and it's gonna be a pretty tough decision. But in one of my next videos, I'm gonna talk about which broker I end up choosing and kind of why, and I'll go through the processes of what what I thought about the pros and cons of each and why I came to the conclusion. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something about interviewing brokers and why I interviewed the, with the two or three that I did. And hopefully you guys were able to see that my dog was also in the corner again. Sugar loves that spot in my room and she sleeps there all the time. So she'll be with me in, in a lot of these videos. And uh, hopefully, again, hopefully you enjoyed it and if you, like this video please give it a thumbs up it would really help out the channel and hopefully i'll see you in the next video